Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the graphs of trig functions. All right. So first up are the graphs of sine theta and cosine theta. And basically, the way I'm going to talk about this is I'm going to explore um, the similarities between these two. And in a future video, I'll explain them. And then on top of that, we're going to explore the graph of tangent theta. All right, so say you have the unit circle and you're gonna kind of make your observations as theta rotates from zero to 360. Now, remember that we figured out that sine and cosine theta repeat every 360 degrees. So let's just first try and find out the graph from theta equals 0 to 360 degrees. And I'm going to make markings at 180, 90, 270 degrees because those seem significant. Now, let's take, say our sine theta is, is here because theta is 0. Of course, sine theta will be zero, so we can plot a point here. We're going to be plotting these points by graphing, by the way. And then say we go to theta equals 90. And we know that sine theta is going to be equal to 1. So let's make this marking 1 here. And there's going to be a point there. And what about 180 degrees? Well, sine theta has gone back to being zero. So I guess there's kind of uh, up motion and then coming back down. And then we can go to 270 degrees. And we find out that sine theta is negative 1. So let's make the marking here for negative 1. And now let's go back to 360 degrees, where we're back to the very beginning and the wave repeats, and sine theta is still 0. Now this is an interesting shape, so I'm going to investigate some more points and see how they are in order to get a better idea. So say we want to take sine 45, which we know is going to be root 2 over 2, which is about 0 0.7. So it's going to be like up here. And then, of course, on the other side, it would also be root 2 over 2, say at theta is equal to 135 degrees. So we also have a point here. And now I'm thinking that this is going to be a kind of wave, but let's just plot some more points to see if we're correct. We'll know that this here, it's going to be root 2 over 2 units down. And so sine theta is going to be negative root 2 over 2 halfway along. And of course, this is the same triangle on the other side. And that's also going to be negative root 2 over 2 for sine theta at this point here, which is going to be 315 degrees. And now we know that the graph of sine theta from 0 to 360 looks somewhat like this. And I find that actually quite interesting. All right, so what we have here is quite an interesting way of doing things. So hmm, let's say we know that this is like this. It's a, uh, it goes up into a peak and then it goes down into a trough and if you take physics, you might recognize this as a kind of wave. So a sine wave, it's the graph of the function of sine theta that extends in both directions from the origin. And it'll look something like this. So it goes up and down and up and down and so on infinitely. And starting at zero, it crosses at pi radians 
and then it crosses again at 2 pi radians. It goes back down at 3 pi radians, and it crosses again at 4 pi radians. And it will keep crossing every pi radians. And it will also have its peak halfway between. For example, this is pi over 2. And this is 3 pi over 2. This is 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, and so on. And this also extends into the negative realm as well. The wave will look like this, and so on and so forth. So we can have that this is negative pi over 2, this is negative pi radians, this is negative 3 pi over 2 radians, and this is negative 4 pi over 2, or rather negative 2 pi radians. So that's, that's the function for the sine wave. Now, you may find that the cosine of theta is going to be actually quite similar to this. And the reason being that the graph of cosine theta would be as if you have rotated the circle 90 degrees and taken the the graph of sine theta. Now what do I mean by that? Imagine if you had a theta that started from the upright position. And you took angles like this instead. So this was your theta and it could go around and you'd get triangles like this or like this, or like this, and so on. And basically, when theta is like this, the cosine theta is the y-coordinate, and you'd get to the point where, as, as you go from the top of 1 following the circular motion down to at 90 degrees it's 0 then at 180 degrees it'll be negative 1 and let's actually plot this as we go along at the top it'll be or I'm going to use a different color for cosine actually first time I use something that's not purple anyway so this is the cosine there's a 1 there as it goes down to 0 at 90 degrees, that is 90 degrees. We get the point here. Then it's going to go down to negative 1, that is 180 degrees. It's going to go back up to negative, uh, it's going to go back up to 0 when theta is 270 degrees. And it's going to go back up to 1 when theta is 360 degrees. And this looks like a V, but you can expect the same kind of thing, points here. Because, as we know, um, for theta is 45, sine theta is equal to cosine theta. And you can expect the same kind of intersection here when theta is 135. And you expect the same kind of sloping curve points here to get that the cosine wave is going to look almost exactly like the sine wave. Quite fantastic, in fact. So, I'm just going to keep drawing it here. And through this, this is actually something that shows you that the cosine wave is a transformation of the sine wave. Say that all of the x values have been moved to the left by pi over 2 radians, or 90 degrees. You can also find the principle that, well, first let's extend this a bit here. Uh, you can find the principle that cosine 
theta is sine theta minus 90. And that's really something quite interesting when you think about the relationship between cosine and sine theta, because if you know the sine value of something, you can also figure out the cosine value of that something. And then from that, you could possibly figure out the tangent value of that something. And that brings us into my next point. We're going to be talking about the graph of tangent theta. So if we go back to purple and we start drawing our graph of tangent theta here, if you recall from the previous video, we know that there are some values of theta for which tangent theta is undefined. Like this is at 90 degrees, at 270 degrees, and they're going to present themselves as asymptotes for when, you know, tangent theta is opposite over adjacent. When adjacent gets to zero, there's going to be asymptotes at 90, 270, negative 90, and so on. So let's take a sample point here, say really close to 90, approaching from this side, what kind of values of sine and cosine do we get? Because we're going to plot this based on the fact that we know that tangent theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta. And sine theta, perhaps approaching 90 degrees, will approach 1. So this is going to be going to 1. And cosine theta will approach 0. So this is going to be going to 0. And since this is going to positive 1, this is going to positive 0, because it's approaching 0 from the top half, like, anyway, you can just believe that tangent theta is going to approach positive infinity as this gets infinitely smaller, but still positive. So tangent theta is going to do something like that on this side of the curve because tangent theta is not restricted to, to negative one to one, like sine and cosine theta are. Like, it is actually quite important to know that there is a restriction here. The top of these curves is at the line y is one, and the bottom of these curves is at the line y is negative one. And this is the case because uh, just basically the fundamental way a right angled triangle is constructed will not allow it to have sine or cosine values outside that range of minus 1 to 1. So let's try, how about we go back down this way to negative 90. Well, we'll know that the sine ap approaches negative 1 and the cosine approaches positive 0. So tan theta, where theta is going to negative 90, is going to be equal to sine theta over cosine theta, for which tangent, I mean theta is going to negative 90, and so sine theta, which is going to be going to negative 1, and cosine theta, which is going to be positive 0, will give you that tan theta, when theta gets cl closer and closer to negative 90, tangent theta is going to get closer and closer to negative infinity. Or in fact, you get this exact same kind of graph, like just on the opposite side down there. And I think that's actually pretty interesting. All right, so now we have this, and we know from previous times that tangent theta repeats itself every 180 degrees, because the gradient here is going to be the same as the gradient 100 degree, 180 degrees later, right over here. And so the, grand, the, the, the graph of tangent theta will look something like this, with intersections every 180 degrees and asymptotes alternating in between those intersections every 180 degrees as well. And hopefully this has given you some intuition as to what the graphs of sine, cosine, and tangent theta will look like. All right, thank you for watching.